get money as a result. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Michael, you had a question associated with Folks in the US that listen will know, well, I wanted to say anybody can go to the emergency room and get treatment for free, but then you have a huge bill, and to see a follow-up specialist, you need money or coverage. Exactly. And you still have a huge bill. Yes. You know, and, uh, and a poor fellow off the street who, who might be living, you know, very next, with next to nothing, he can't afford to pay that bill. This is the irony of most of what we do on this earth. Water, we charge for. We buy water. Like, you need water every day. Like, within a few days, if you don't have water, you, you die, right? And, you know, you can die from, from dehydration, right? Very rapidly. And yet we have to pay for water? Like, and there's so much water on the planet, but we pay for it. Now, that, that is, doesn't that show you how deep our injury about money is that even in this life essential, we're asking people to pay for? Like, that's crazy, in my opinion. Then food. Let's look at All of us need food. And we've got to pay for it. How crazy is that? Like, and then all of us at some point, because of our emotional injuries, need some health care of some kind. And we've got to pay for that as well. All of these life essential things we've got to pay for. Now, this is wrong. Like, you know, I can understand you want it, having to pay for a painting or a car or something that's not so much a life essential item. But these life essential things, we should be giving money to the farmers to produce. We should be giving you know, money to, to the people who, make, who, who refine the water to refine the water. And then we should just be freely give, distributing that water to everybody involved. When it comes to other things that are not necessities, then I can understand, yes, you know, sure, let's, let's maybe charge them if that's what you want to do. But, uh, but the, the, the reality is... We have become so distorted in our econom economies that we now charge people for the very essentials of life. And that, that is just ludicrous when you think about it. Yeah. I also wanted to ask, thank you, AJ, um, the, about money and your... And people often justify you're overturning the tables in the temple as mm -hmm. Jesus showed anger, and so they can feel <laughs> anger. I know they justify that. say something about that? Yeah, the reality is I didn't, I didn't ever overturn the, chain, the money changers' temples. What actually happened was I just had a discussion with everybody in the temple as that I've just had with you. I said, does this feel right to be charged for a dove that's going to require, you know, your sac that's required by law for you to sacrifice in order to, you know, to be um, uh, forgiven? And does this seem right to you that you get charged ten times the amount for the dove because it's in the temple when you can just go out on the street right outside the temple and, and pay one-tenth of the price and yet they won't let you sacrifice that dove and yet the actual law said that you can sacrifice any dove. And that's all I said. Now people were so angry about it that they all started to go, you know, they start talking about, yes, this is terrible. And they got so enraged about it that they went through the whole temple chucking out the money changers. Oh, the, your audience, the people yeah, you were speaking audience. to. They, yeah, they that I was speaking truth. to. They just, they just got angry and off they went. <laughs> and and threw, <laughs> threw out the money changers. And you got the blame. And I got the blame. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Thanks. Yeah. Does that make sense to you as to what happened there? So the reality is I wasn't, I, I wasn't angry. I just stated the truth about how the people were treating the money issue. Does that make sense? And because of how, I was treat, how they were treating, uh, how people were just ignoring a basic thing that they were all angry about, me just stating the truth caused them to feel their anger and then they reacted. Yeah. You want to ask another question? And the sacrifice wasn't necessary or wasn't useful either. Did you address that? I often address that. In fact, I said that God, uh, God would prefer obedience rather than sacrifice. Obedience. 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 So what I, what I meant by that was, that was that God had a whole heap of laws. And if you obeyed those laws, you wouldn't need to sacrifice anything. You wouldn't even need to ask for forgiveness because you're no longer committing a sin. That's the irony, right? 
So, so what I was talking about with, 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 with God was that God requires, what, really what God wants is obedience to the, to the laws of love rather than sacrificing because you didn't obey the laws of love. So, so what, what religion has got used to doing on this planet is they've gotten used to doing things wrong and then paying the penalty for the thing wrong after it's done. Do you see that? Like you think of most religions on the planet, you know, there is this process where, well, you, you look at the largest churches, for example, like the Catholic Church, for example. There's, there's the confession. Right? So you do the wrong thing, because you can't help yourself, of course, right? And then you confess to it, and then you do a few Hail Marys, and, right? off you go. and off you go, because you've been forgiven. I, and the priest says, I absolve you from your sin as if the priest can absolve them from anything. Right? Now, now, the problem with that, with that whole teaching is that, is that it encourages people to sin and then to feel bad about the sin and then to sacrifice, in other words, to confess and own up to the sin and then be absolved. And that, what's that going to do? Just encourage them to sin some more. The reality is that when you encourage a person to obey the law then they don't need to sin and they're therefore they never need a sacrifice and they'll never need to ask for forgiveness. That's a better place to be, obviously. Now, now the church has created that other place, that alternate existence, because they had a lot of power in that place. You can make people feel guilty. You can make them feel bad. You can ask money from them to, for their, to absolve their sins and so forth. You, you know, there's a lot of things you can do once a person feels guilty and feels like they have to sacrifice. Nice.